Hey Tony, you gonna do any work today? Nah, me either. Oh, hey, welcome back. So today I'm gonna talk about uh, how I found my 20K per month product. Um, it's something that a lot of the people in the Facebook group that I'm in, uh, FBA Winners, which is uh, Tamara T's group. If you don't know it, I'll link to her channel in the uh, description, wherever it is. Um, a lot of people ask me w how I found my product. Um, and I think they're surprised when I tell them I just found it the same way everybody seems to find their product or most people, the, the traditional or uh, you know conventional, more old school way. Um, which is using the Jungle Scout app, um, the web app. Um, this is probably, I mean, Amazon FBA selling is still kind of in its infancy, but this is, you know, this is a, a tried and true method that most of the kind of old school uh, sellers have used to find their products. There's a lot of other probably better ways to find the pro your products now which you know we'll get into in other videos but this is how I found mine um, so that's what we're going to talk about today and now when I say that I've got a 20k um, rep per month product that's not profit that's something that's very important to uh, know the difference between it's revenue um, and what I was selling Everything's backwards on this webcam. This is blurry as hell, but I'll, I'll put up a, um, a screenshot uh, so you can see it clearer. But I was out of stock um, here halfway through this day, and I had hazmat review for a day and a half here. So this is really like five days of sales, and it was $4,000. So that's why I'm saying it's a 20 k per month product, because it was trending that way when I ran out of stock. Um, if you don't know, if you're not in the group, I ran out of stock on the 22nd uh, of October and I'm uh, getting back in stock at the end of the week. So um, this is my first product. Uh, I, I went live on Labor Day um, on whatever that was, September 5th or 6th. Um, the product started selling right away because um, of how I structured the, the, um, the listing and, and the deal. It, it, I basically made it so you'd have to be a complete idiot to buy my competitors products over mine and I'm going to show you what I mean uh, later in this video here so um, why don't we just look at well we're gonna I'm gonna switch over and show you uh, my computer screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about so as my grandpa old Searle would say let's dive right in post haste so Okay, so what we're talking about is the Jungle Scout web app. We're not talking about the Chrome extension. That's that's a topic for another day. So the plan I took was just this cheapo entrepreneur one. It's not actually that cheap um, because I do I did it monthly, so it's forty bucks a month. It's actually probably a better deal to take the the annual one. I should really switch um, because right now I'm doing this monthly one. Because the person that I used to watch when I first started out was saying, you know, you don't need um, you don't need it all the time, only when you're doing product research. But if you're not doing product research all the time, then what are you doing in this business in the first place? Is my question. You always need to be doing product research. You always need to be keeping an eye on your competitors. So I would I would take this one and go with the yearly. Um, I, I, you know, that's that's what I should have done in the first place, but I was listening to bad advice, which is one of the reasons why I started this channel in the first place. So anyway, when you get into your, your Jungle Scout, you're going to go here, the product database or database, whatever you want to say. And uh, this is, these are the, again, I'm showing you what I did. This isn't necessarily what I would do if I had to do it over again, but this is how I found my product. So I had ticked off baby, beauty, and personal care health and household, home and kitchen, office products, patio, pet supplies, sports, outdoors, tools, and home improvement. My product fell into one of these two categories. I don't even remember which one it is. Um, it's listed as, as home now, but I don't know how it came up. Um, now, this is, a, people are gonna, sh there's tons of videos on how to do this as well, and they all have different um, opinions on what parameters to put in here. However, again, this is how I found my product. 
I searched only between $30 and $35. The um, product that I found, the competitor that I found that I targeted uh, was at the time selling it for $32. He's now selling it for $29.99, which is what I'm selling mine for. Um, but this is what I, I would recommend going between a $5 range starting at, at 30. Again, this is gonna depend largely on your budget. If you have a lower budget, I was very fortunate to start off. I had a lot of money socked away. I had $25,000 to throw at this, which I know most of you aren't gonna have. So um, I was able to look at a much higher um, a much higher price point than some of you are probably gonna be able to do. But do, do what you're comfortable with. Um, I honestly don't think it's worth, I mean, it's it's if you if you really can't afford to do anything more than you know ten fifteen dollars then do that but if you can if there's a way that you can pull it off look for over twenty dollars because then you're gonna be making real money um, I searched between thirty and thirty five I put in that ignore all of this stuff um, the minimum to, to maximum monthly revenue um, my target was minimum ten thousand dollars the only way that you're gonna hit a home run is if you're looking for a home run. So I I know that there's a lot of school of thoughts out there, but personally, I think go big and then go down from there. If you can't find something good at these these um, revenue figures, then look lower. Don't don't aim low because then you're gonna you know you're gonna only hit a single. Aim for the homer. Um, I went all the way up to seventy thousand dollars. Uh, you might want to do a little less as you can see I had totally uh, I have total 5,500 results here so that's a lot to sift through um, minimum reviews zero maximum 500 reviews again is a, a big sticking point amongst a lot of the gurus ask yourself this question as a customer do you care if something has a hundred reviews or if it has 500 reviews I personally don't care uh, as long as it has a few reviews and doesn't look suspicious, that will um, satisfy me. So I think it's a whole, uh, you know, there's so many people that focus way too much on this. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, speaking from experience, it doesn't matter. Minimum weight, this is another one. Uh, I guess all of these are kind of points of contention, but I put up to five pounds. Now my product is uh, five pounds. So if I had put this really low, you know, and, and my product is a $20,000 a month product, I would have missed out on it. So minimum sellers, uh, zero, maximum sellers, 10. I don't want to go into something that has, you know, you want it to be competitive because if it's not competitive, that means it probably sucks. Um, you know, there's a chance you might find that unicorn where it's low competition and, and uh, high profit, but in reality, there's tons of high competition products that are very lucrative and you can still go in. There's there's still a lot of room for competition in Amazon. So anyway, this is the parameters. This is the key point here is put in this stuff and um, try and limit it to 5,000 maximum. Ideally, you'd want it lower than that. But I'm telling you what I did and what I did was I scrolled through this endlessly. I scrolled through at least 30 pages before I found my product. Now, in that time, I found probably upwards of 20 other products that are very good that I saved to my favorites um, that I could have done and I may still do in the future. Um, but I, I just saved it. You know, I'd go through it for an hour or two a day. It took me probably about six hours of going through all of these because you don't just breeze through them. You have to give them, you know, you have to analyze each one and give it some thought. Um, I would just save it in my favorites at the end of the day when I got bored or tired. I would be able to come back and I would, I would pick up where I'd left off with the same parameters. Oh, one thing, one important thing that I forgot to mention is you want to exclude a lot of keywords. Um, basically I went through, you're going to have to refine this a few times. Um, I went through and I put anything that I didn't want to do. Like I knew I didn't want to do clothes. Anything that that has a you know a size and can fit wrong has a high potential for a lot of returns. So I didn't want any clothes. I didn't want any shoes. You don't like if we scroll through this, you'll see Under Armour. Um, I didn't want any name brands, NCAA. 
I didn't want any antioxidants, anything that supplements, nothing that goes in or on the body um, because there's way more regulations. So put in, you know, and, and again, this will have to be something you decide for yourself is what don't you want to do? So that's what you put in the exclude keywords. So what I did, I'm just going to use this slip cover as an example. It's, I, I don't know how good of a product it is. I mean, let's take a look at it. The revenue is 66,000 per month. Um, there's only one seller. Uh, there's 200 reviews. It's two pounds. Yeah, this looks, this looks potentially good, but of course you'd have to run the numbers in the, um, the Chrome extension before you knew. But anyway, I don't want to get too off track here. So what I did was let's say that this was, this was my product. I found this this product because it was in my um, my target revenue range, um, and it didn't have it wasn't too competitive into the point where I didn't feel like I could improve upon it. So what I did was I I looked at my competitors' uh, at listing, and I looked for weaknesses. Um, my comp my competitor this one looks okay, but my competitor had weak bullet points. So that right there was something I could improve upon immediately um, my competitor also had pretty weak pictures um, which which this guy mm, they're okay that looks maybe photoshopped but um, you know those are those are a couple of things that you can improve upon very easily but the key to my product was adding something that my competitor didn't have because if all else is the same, then they're just your customers are the customers are just going to buy whatever is the cheapest option. Okay, so you have to add some value um, to the point where you make it impossible for them to not choose yours. They you put them in a position where they would have to be completely stupid to take your competitor's product over your own. So what I mean by that is with mine, let's say I had. Um, this this slip cover um, what I did was I added a free bonus to mine that my competitor did not have and in my case it was a small travel sized version it has to be re something related in my case it was a small travel uh, travel sized version of my product so my competitor did not have that um, and when I when I put my ad up with my better pictures and better bullet points and a free bonus, it put that the customers in that position where they would have to be a complete idiot to buy my competitor's product because my, my free bonus is an actual free bonus. My product is priced exactly the same as my competitors. The free bonus costs me a dollar twenty to um from my supplier. So it costs me a uh, dollar twenty in profit. However Look at how well my product's been selling. I'm not even on the first page for most of my keywords. I'm, I fluctuate from the bottom of page one and top of page two for my main keyword. So that tells you right there how good of an offer mine is. It's, it's too good to pass up. So in this case, like if you were doing something like this, maybe what you would do, if this guy is only offering this, this slip cover and it looks like that's all he is, you would throw in these two pillow, you know, the standard pillowcase covers, right? So all of a sudden, your your listing is better than this. And that probably wouldn't cost you much to do. It might cost you an extra dollar or so. But your profit margin, because you're looking at a higher higher ticket item, is going to be wide enough that you can you can bear that. So that that is in my opinion, I mean I don't know uh, I can't get inside the head of every one of the people who's bought my item, but based on reviews, based on my previous experience in business, uh, adding value like that in a, in a, something that's actually a free bonus, you know, you're not tricking your customer. You're not saying it's free and putting an extra $2 uh, on the price because then all of a sudden it's not a free bonus and anyone who's not stupid is going to look at your nearest competitor and they're going to see that and they're gonna, you're going to lose um, you know, any trust you had built up with that customer. So by including an actually free bonus, like in this case, these free um, slip covers that we're going to do for the pillowcases, uh, sorry, for the pillows, that makes your product, if all else is equal, 
um, it makes your product far superior to your nearest competitor. And the fact that we also found someone um, who, not necessarily in this case, I'm just using this as an example, but in my case, I found someone who had fairly weak pictures, had fairly weak bullet points, but he did have a good product. He had something that was priced well, that had a good profit margin, that was selling very well. So that's why I targeted that product. Um, so that just makes it even easier. But you don't necessarily need to have weaknesses in these, these places. That just makes it even easier. You know, if you find something like, hell, I'm going to research this a little bit. This might be a good product. I don't know. But if you find something that is otherwise fairly strong, like this listing, um, but you you know, you talk to your supplier and they can give you this, you know, the pillow covers um, for a reasonable price and you can compete with this guy, then that that alone is enough. There is so much business on Amazon. There's there's room for everyone. There's room for my competitor. There's room for me. There's room for you um, and, you know, 10 of your friends because Amazon is blowing up that huge right now. There's just there's so much money on Amazon. So don't worry about competition. Um, as long as you bring a good product to the market, you will succeed. Um, if you listen to what people like myself are telling you. Um, so don't, don't be scared off by competition is, is my main point of this video. That is how I found my product. Um, you know, it's, I think, got potential to do 30,000 or above per month uh, once I get relisted and get ranked on page one, like I'm still, you know, it's, it's such a new listing. It was only listed for less than seven weeks when I ran out of stock and I didn't run I didn't do a, a giveaway. I didn't do, um, I didn't, I didn't do a launch. Uh, I just did PPC. So I didn't want to risk doing a launch unless I had to, and I wanted to play by Amazon's rules and it worked out. So just imagine once my product gets to page one, what it's going to be doing. I think 30,000 is, is very feasible, maybe even more. Uh, and that's just one product. So anyway, if you're new here, subscribe, um, hit the bell icon so you know when I upload. Um, I'm going to uh, post, like I said, uh, Tamara T's group below. That's not my group. So don't, uh, you know, nothing I'm saying here is, is endorsed by her or, or her mods. But um, that's the group I'm most active in. So if you want to talk to me, that's a good place to do it or leave a comment and uh, I will get back to you. Anyway, let's get back to the warehouse. All right. So that's it for today. If you're new here, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know uh, what else you'd like to see videos on. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you next time. And uh, Tony, cut the feed.